You will discover today the subtle characteristics of those who were abused mentally by narcissists. One might hurt oneself in future relationships by engaging in these practices. A person's conduct might alter for a multitude of reasons. Human behavior is dynamic, impacted by a multitude of internal and external influences, much like the tides in the ocean. Positive changes in behavior are possible, just like any other kind of change. The majority of behavior changes resulting from mental maltreatment, however, are unfavorable. You will see 10 subtle features in this video that indicate people who have experienced narcissistic mental abuse. Now let's get started. Number one trait, indecisive. It's difficult to comfort those who have been mentally abused by narcissists. Their uncomfortable behavior is a result of the narcissist's worry, which makes them jittery or fidgety. Victims struggle to remain still, they are easily distracted and find it difficult to concentrate. It's possible that they overthink situations that have never even happened and are inundated with an excessive amount of negative ideas. In an attempt to at least somewhat improve the situation, they divert such thoughts into fidgeting. Other times, as a result of this uneasy behavior, sufferers pick up habits like chewing their nails, drumming their fingers on tabletops, and moving their feet. The second trait is resentful. Abuse of the mind is a terrible experience. A victim's vindictive actions are a normal reaction to the abuser's wrongdoings. In the hopes that one day the tables would turn and they might exact retribution, victims often keep a record of their horrific experiences in order to harbor grudges against their abuser. Particularly for narcissists who act as though they are superior, the moment will come to exact revenge and rationalize their horrible experience. If you are a victim, you will become weary of always giving in to their demands and of their constant treatment of you as if you were a lower-born person. Therefore, you want to force them to kneel and take that control away from them. Being unable to exact this retribution on the narcissists will make one resentful. Unknowingly, victims transfer their anger on others around them. The third trait is excessive compliance. The act of changing one's conduct to comply with a request or instruction from another person is known as compliance. Overcompliance is defined as overdoing compliance, in which the person consistently decides to comply even when they have the choice to decline the request or even when they are unable to comply. This is agreeing to do something only because someone else asks you to, even when you don't want to. After mental abuse, victims frequently overcompliance in an attempt to prevent more violence. Another possibility is that they still wish to keep up their connections with their abuser or other individuals. Fourth trait, depression and anxiety. Have you ever known anybody who seems to be gloomy and nervous all the time? Have you made an attempt to ask that individual how they are doing or whether everything is okay? That individual could be the target of narcissistic mental abuse. Abuse of the mind is extremely taxing. It lasts longer than injuries that may be treated with ice packs. It is difficult to forget mental abuse. It only takes one word to describe it, but that one word has more power than a knife, particularly if the abuser is someone you cannot seem to get away from or who you see every day. Naturally, it is impossible for someone to feel joyful and optimistic while they are expecting more abuse. It never has. Rather, it causes you to act apprehensive and melancholy, wanting the world to stop. It keeps you wondering what may possibly come next. Seek assistance from a specialist if you ever feel this way. Hi there, viewers unexpectedly, 80% of you still haven't subscribed. Your support is much appreciated if you subscribe and give this video a thumbs up if you're enjoying it. Shall we proceed now? The fifth trait is a lack of self-control. Every human person is controlled primarily by their mind, which also governs their entire body and sense of self. Before anything is done or behaved, it all begins here. It analyzes the circumstances before acting. The problem with mental abuse is that it goes after main control, which makes the parts rebellious. It is not good when a victim loses control over themselves and is unable to suppress their feelings, urges, or wants. A lack of self-control only leads to disaster. It causes people to say or do things they will always regret. The sixth trait is pessimism. Have you ever come across someone who has a pessimistic view on life? Someone who just exists for the purpose of existing? Someone who is on the verge of giving up? Someone who constantly questions everything, including oneself, and is not an exception? Mental abuse is indicated by a person who lacks trust in their future or hope. 
They have a pessimistic outlook on the past, present, and future and think that what is ahead, behind, or exactly as it is, is the worst of the worst. When they are treated kindly, they start to grow suspicious because they believe that this is a prelude to future malice. For instance, deterioration is one consequence of mental maltreatment. This decline will subsequently cause you to become pessimistic. This will lead to you underestimating your own talents, robbing yourself of the wonderful things in life, believing that you don't deserve them, and being hesitant to take chances for fear of failure. The seventh trait is slackness or inactivity. Individuals who suffer from mental abuse become disinterested in even the activities they formerly found so enjoyable, which makes them appear lazy and passive. Despite being given time and resources, individuals continue to show signs of not wanting to work. Even if they know they have the ability and can finish the assignment flawlessly, they are nonetheless uninspired. The reason for this is because, as a result of the narcissist's mental abuse of them, they tend to see the worst in everything. Naturally, no one would be productive if they had such a negative attitude on life, particularly if others did not appreciate your work, which would make it unsatisfying and unrewarding. The eighth trait is a lack of confidence. Being the victim of mental abuse is an unpleasant experience that is embarrassing for the sufferer. It presents them as helpless, unworthy, and exposed. They fear that if they tell people about their terrible experiences, they would be scrutinized or condemned. In contrast, victims always come off as weak, inferior, and vulnerable, regardless of how hard they try to prevent seeming that way. No one would want to appear that way. This is a result of abusers' propensity to repeatedly assault victims' brains by telling them they are this or that. Naturally, hearing these mentally excruciating comments again and over would attach itself to their innermost being, shattering their confidence. The ninth trait is recklessness. According to psychology, reckless behavior is total negligence that results in an incapacity to attend to both one's own and other people's needs. A victim of mental abuse becomes impulsive and careless in their choices. It's possible that victims become codependent on their abuser because they were subjected to the abuser's control for an extended length of time. This is due to the fact that their abusers frequently force them to confront a psychological conundrum in which whatever decisions they make on their own would inevitably result in worse outcomes. Their incapacity to make wise judgments or irresponsibility will be the outcome of this mental maltreatment. Tenth trait, irrationality. Irrationality is the ability to ignore reason while making judgments, act or respond even in haste and with little justification, and exhibit excessive sensitivity by displaying irrational and exaggerated feelings. Mental abusers subvert the victim's sense of reason by instilling false, fundamental ideas in their heads, beliefs that are frequently harmful and condemning. This viewpoint frequently draws attention to how unworthy their victims are, this has a detrimental impact on how their victims think about things and leads to illogical behaviors. Naturally, it is common for someone to feel attacked when they are called names or condemned for something they are not. Recall that there is hope for a better future and that you are not alone. It is crucial that you get professional advice and help if you or someone you know exhibits these characteristics and is having difficulties. There is hope for recovery and a brighter, healthier future. We value your participation and presence. If you thought this material was helpful, please think about subscribing and giving us a thumbs up. Your contribution keeps us motivated to keep offering important insights and building a welcoming community. As we approach to an end of this insightful voyage, keep in mind that your health is important and that you are capable of overcoming obstacles and succeeding. I am grateful that you shared in this life-changing event. Until we meet again, be careful and resilient.